Jo wieder gibt. Patch 4.2 has added a lot of new awesome features, reworked some operators, balanced the game and fixed bugs. Unfortunately, just like Ubisoft patches seem to tend to do, it introduced some new bugs as well. Here's a quick rundown of 5 bugs that I'm currently aware of. As you probably know, Doc can now heal teammates as well as himself. However, unlike reviving people, he does not receive any points for doing this. I think it would be highly unlikely that this is intentional as you get points for literally every other action in the game, so this is most likely a bug. I mean, it's obviously not game breaking by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still weird and unintuitive. Next up, we have an issue with Twitch's changed gadget. Sometimes deploying her second shock drone after the first one has been destroyed makes the newly deployed second drone spawn where the first one just got destroyed. That's especially problematic because usually your shock drone died in a specific spot because an enemy is close to that spot and it's dangerous. So this bug possibly puts your second drone in danger straight away as well. Other than that it's very disorienting and can potentially cost you valuable time you need in order to win the round. Speaking of Twitch, as you know she now gets to deploy her shock drone in the preparation phase. As a huge fan and regular player of Twitch, I love this change a lot. I've been destroying outside cameras and harassing defenders in the prep phase all day. However, Ubisoft again seems to have overlooked some aspects about this change. Unlike regular drones, teammates are unable to spectate your shock drone in the prep phase at the moment. So let's say you're an attacker and your drone gets killed in a preparation phase. You can now spectate all of your teammates except Twitch. Obviously this is inconsistent with how the rest of the game works. It's unintuitive and I can't see this working as intended. Honestly it seems like Ubisoft just overlooked this when implementing the change. And actually there's even more that they seem to have overlooked about Twitch. Her shock drone can taser gadgets and players for sure, but one of its drawbacks is the inability to jump. However, in the preparation phase, you now might spawn in in places where your drone has to jump over a little wall or a ledge to get out of the spawn at all. If your Twitch drone ends up spawning there, since you can't jump, you might as well go and grab a snack and wait until the preparation phase is over. You won't be able to do much with it at all until you spawn in yourself and go and pick it back up again. And finally, Ubisoft added claymores to Rainbow Six. It's like they heard our cries and finally gave us a way to counter the plentiful roamers that they just seem to keep adding with every new DLC. And that's good and all, but they forgot to mute the character callouts for placing claymores for the enemy team. See, back in the beta, the enemy team used to be able to hear all of your operator's callouts. While they were atmospheric, they obviously gave away the usage of gadgets and the position of players. If you were reinforcing a wall or using your gadget, your character would be shouting out that he was doing just that. That was especially bad because of the option to enable subtitles effectively giving you a text notification of enemies performing almost any action right on your screen. Consequently, Ubisoft muted your operator's callouts to the enemy team with a patch. So if your character was shouting anything, your team would be able to hear it, but not the enemies anymore. However, they seem to have overlooked this for the new Claymore placement callouts. As it stands, you are able to hear and see if you enabled the subtitles, enemies placing claymores, taking away any moment of surprise they may provide. I've no doubt that Ubisoft will fix some, if not all of these bugs with an upcoming update. I just think it again shows how these patches either need to go through more quality assurance testing or how the game could benefit from a public beta branch. Many other games allow for beta testing of upcoming patches and the community always shows itself as being very eager to find new bugs and giving developers the ability of fixing them. I mean if we look back at the previous patches Ubisoft released for the game, we had incredible glitches being introduced like 
the thermite wall glitch, which still isn't fixed actually, the black Jesus glitch, which was especially bad, where some characters would just be 2D and black. The Capcan glitches various versions of those with the traps being weird and unpredictable. And of course, still unfixed, we have the Surrender glitch, which allows you to deny the enemy team any elo points in ranked games, which is incredibly frustrating and a very cheap tactic to use as well. It got so bad that they at least disabled the Surrender option altogether for now. I mean, I'm obviously not going to go into the hit registration issues at all. They would require their whole video on their own. So, while I'm pretty glad that there are many new features piling up in Rainbow Six Siege, I also worry that the glitches might keep piling up as well, and maybe there should be a concentrated focus, at least for a while, on making the game more stable overall.